Okay, let's start here. You see this box? Yeah, it has hoops written on it. This is our TV stand. You see, we moved into this house about a year ago, and it has a built-in nook for the TV. But for the time being, we just had a few boxes and some kids. So, you know, hoop box. Anyway, to figure out a design for this space, I think it's important to inhabit the space, really get in there and live it up. So after spending some quality time with the Nook, you know, really becoming friends, I decided on a design that is based on an artist's easel. I created this design originally for a more freestanding option, but thought it would work well here. It allows the center platform that holds the screen to adjust for different heights, and I like the openness of it rather than some sort of media cabinets. For the build, I'm using some old oak posts, some of which are pretty heavily weathered and warped, so they'll need a fair amount of milling down. I was able to find a few boards straight enough that I could use them for the longer vertical members of the stand, and some of the more warped boards I just cut in half or thirds so they could be milled and still be usable. For boards that were heavily twisted, I knocked down the high points with a hand plane before running it through the joiner, which probably says more about my ability to use or not use the joiner, but it helps me to get a straight edge. So I milled up more board than I'd need for this project so I would have a variety to sort through and try and find some that had nice texture or grain and mark and set those aside. I could then pair those up and cut them to rough length. The way the stand is designed, there's a very small tilt only two degrees so that it doesn't affect the viewing angle of your television, but it does let it sit slightly back. So to cut the deep tin and joint, I used a miter gauge at the table saw, set the two degree angle and cut the shoulders on the tenons, including angling the blade for the second set of shoulders, though this was probably not necessary for such a small cut. The waist could then be cut away at the bandsaw. To make the mortises, I marked the area that needed to be cut away, and then used a Forstner bit at the drill press, keeping in mind the angle needed. So. I drilled right to the line on one side where the angle will be undercut, but I had to stay away from the line on the opposite side. Then came the task of chiseling out the waste, and on this dry old oak, it was a lot of chips and very few shavings. To help with the angle, I cut another board at two degrees and then set it right against the mortise edge as a reference surface. Ultimately, it was a good fit, though not a really clean set of mortises, but don't tell anyone, we'll, I'll be fine. With the large mortises done, I could assemble those parts and use them as a direct reference for the supporting cross member and simply draw in the angle. And I could take that to the table saw, line it up, and cut the shoulder depth on each side.
using the same angle, cut away the end of the board. Then I could use that surface to help cut away some of the waste on the tenon. This is a bit of a weird cut, but I used the base, the fence, and the stop as three points of contact so I could hold the piece really securely, and I felt safe in making this cut. The rest of the tenon was cleaned up with hand tools. For the tenon on the other end, I needed to cut a very steep angle. I started by setting my miter saw at 45 degrees got a scrap of plywood and lined the board up with the cut, which let me trace the outline of the board on the plywood. Then I stepped away and quickly cut that shape out on the bandsaw to act as an angle jig. I secured the plywood down with double-sided tape, set the depth and cut the shoulders. Then I could flip the jig over, make the shoulder cut. Pull the board back some distance and cut the end off. And then make a series of shallow cuts. Which were then easy to clean up with a chisel and shoulder plane. and the rest of the tenon could be finished by hand. With the tenons complete, I could mark the area for the mortises and use the same method as before, drilling away the waste and finishing it with a chisel. Now, part of the purpose of this design is again that the screen can be held at different heights so the platform can move up and down in the frame and is held in place by large pegs. So the next step was to route out the channel for that platform to ride in. This took several passes to get it to full depth on the router table. To drill the holes for the pegs, I used a small bit to drill completely through, then used a Forstner bit going about halfway on each side to create clean holes. With the sides complete, I can then build the platform. I use some wider plain sawn oak and created some wide mortise and tenons for the main vertical and horizontal piece to fit together. I also needed to cut away space for the frame sides, so it made for an interesting looking part and connection. Supports were added and beveled at the miter saw, and at this point I was done with chiseling out the mortises by hand, so I made things easier by getting out the domino. With the domino, things moved quicker. I could simply mark the loose tenon locations and cut all the mortises. It is important to keep track of which side you're cutting from.
and at some point I ran out of dominoes and needed to make a new batch. But then I was ready to dry fit the front of the platform so I could position the front rail. Most of the platform was built from plain sawn oak, but for the front rail I found a board that had more texture and ray flakes since it would be seen. After marking and cutting the mortises to connect the front rail, making sure I was cutting the dominoes from the correct side, I cut decorative arcs on each side of the rail. Then I could turn to the back of the platform, which was very similar. Cut a board and supports down to size, then mark and cut the dominoes. The backside is really just for running cables through, so it doesn't need a lot of support. With the joinery done, I could cut large holes for cables, and the platform is ready for glue up. I didn't try to glue up everything at once, but started with the front, let that set, and then continued with the rest. I probably should have drilled the peg holes earlier, but being careful and using a smaller bit first to act as a guide, this worked out fine. Gluing up the sides was much more satisfying, knocking together those larger joints. Trying to clamp those angles was a bit funny, but it worked fine by using extra clamps to clamp Two. I finished all the main parts separately and probably should have finished the platform before gluing it up to avoid so many corners. But oh well, I used a transtent die to add some color all around and hopefully pop the ray flakes in the areas that are going to be seen. This also raised the grain quite a lot, so I knocked that back down with light sanding. I also wanted to knock back the color, which was more reddish than I had wanted. Then I added two coats of hard oil number nine. You can see that front rail on the platform has some interesting character on it now with the finish. To join everything together, there is a bottom shelf and top crossbar that would be glued with the platform trapped inside. I had planned on gluing it, but as we moved within the last year and the pain of that was still on my mind, I decided to make this whole thing collapsible. So I still added dominoes in the shelf, then added pocket screws underneath to secure the shelves in place. Combining dominoes and pocket holes together is probably some sort of heresy for which I will suffer forever in hell, but at least I'll be able to take this apart next time we move. To make the top rail removable, I added some nice large Allen bolts that would sit just proud of the surface.
The holes were drilled in the back side of the legs before assembly. Then the shelf and cross member could be added on one side. And the whole thing turned on its side to set in the platform and attach the other leg. The bottom shelf was sized so the width of the platform had just a little play in it to move freely up and down, but I had to be sure the top was also spaced the same and square to the legs. With the cross beam correctly positioned, I could drill into it, then use a tap to thread it for the bolt. And actually I was really happy with this option, I think it looks nice. So everything is done except for the pegs to hold the platform at various heights. I turned these also from oak and didn't make them fancy. They just had to make sure they were turned to the correct diameter for the holes, which for me was slightly under 3 8 So it's done. The platform moves well up and down in the channel and I could take it inside. My screen did sit fine, but could be pulled over easily. So to be safe, I added a few straps to the cross member and now it's very secure. Oh yeah, it's also important to have googly eyes on your screen, but I'm sure you knew that. Thanks for watching.